Hello everyone, how are you today? How are you all doing? I hope you are keeping safe. I'm also doing great here. Yeah. So today I'll be showing you how I made this beautiful jacket. It's called the waterfall jacket, yeah. And it's actually called the waterfall jacket because of the cut that is in front, yeah. You see that curly um, design? Yes, that is what makes it a waterfall jacket, okay. So this is what the back looks like, yeah. So this jacket is a reversible one, okay. You can wear it inside out. I'll be teaching you how to do a closed finishing, alright. So that the stitches are not um, visible on the outside all right you can wear it over a dress you can wear it on a pair of jeans and you can even wear it alone okay so you can use a bridge to hold the front pieces together and that is it so guys this is the only place where the stitches are actually visible okay and that is at the hem of the dress and who's going to look at the hem of your dress i don't think anyone will do that okay so when you're closing yours up you should use a matching thread okay i'm still going to show you how to do it all right so guys if you're here to subscribe to my channel please please subscribe and please turn on the notification bell okay so that you get notified anytime i post a new video okay don't miss out on this and also you can share like my content and put down your comments okay so now let's get to the tutorial So guys i'll be starting by folding my fabric into two which is what i have done okay and i've also measured the length of the jacket okay i want the length to be 35 inches so from the bottom of the fabric up to this line is 35 inches okay so on that line which is my baseline okay i've also marked half of my shoulder measurement okay my shoulder is 15 and half of it is 7.5 okay so i've marked 7.5 on that baseline all right so now to the other measurements first i'll be measuring my chest line okay my chest line is my arm side divided by two okay so you measure around your arm side okay and then you divide it by two mine is 17 17 divided by two is 8.5 okay so from the baseline which is also my shoulder line i marked 8.5 and then i'm drawing it into a straight line okay so the next thing is to measure your waistline from my shoulder to my waist is 15.5 okay so now i'm marking 15.5 and then i'm also going to draw that into a straight line all right now my hips measurement okay from my waist to my hips is 7.5 okay so now i'll be marking the points and then i'll draw it into a straight line so here i'm just labeling the lines okay so that we can understand what i'm saying this is the hips the waist and then the bust line all right so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to put my actual measurements on the line that i have drawn okay so first i'll be putting the same measurement that i put on the shoulder line okay which is 7.5 i'll be putting the same on my bust line okay so now to the waist the measurement around your waist divided by four okay will give you your waist measurement okay but because this is a loose garment okay it's not going to be tightly fitted i will be adding some extra inches to it okay so that it will be loose on my body and because of that as well i won't be putting any dirt all right so now my waist measurement is 29 29 divided by 4 that is 7.25 so i'm adding an extra 0.75 inches to it okay that makes it eight okay and then i'll be adding an extra one inch to it for seam allowance okay and that is the second mark right there okay so now to my hips my hips measurement is 39 39 divided by four that's 9.75 okay plus 0 0.75 allowance okay just to make the garment free that is 10.5 okay so i'll be marking 10.5 and then i'll be marking an extra one inch for same allowance all right so had the m i'll be adding three inches to the measurements i marked at the hips okay so now that is 10.5 plus 3 that's 13.5 all right and that is because i want the bottom to be wide all right i don't want it to be just straight down and here again i'm also adding an extra one inch for seam allowance okay so the next thing i'll be doing is to join all the points together okay 
so i'll be using my ruler to join the points together from the hips to the hem and then from the waist to the hips so back to my chest line my bust measurement is 34 34 divided by 4 that's 8.5 all right so i'll be adding ease allowance as well but i don't want it to be as much as the ones i had it to the hips and the waist okay so i'll be adding 0 0.5 inch all right as um ease allowance so 0 0.5 plus 8.5 that is 9 all right and then i'll be marking an extra one inch for same allowance as well okay so now i'm connecting the points together the bust to the waist all right so the next thing i'll be doing now is to draft the ham hole so first of all i'm going to join the marks that i made on the shoulder line and on the bust line okay remember that 7.5 that i marked initially all right so on the shoulder line i'll be coming down by one inch okay that one inch is for our shoulder slant okay you know our shoulder is not straight all right it's a slanted so the one inch is for the shoulder slant all right so right on that mark okay i'll be measuring it down to the chest line okay so that is 7.5 okay and then i'll be finding the midpoint of 7.5 that is 3.25 and then from that 3.25 yeah the midpoint of that line i'll be connecting it to the bust line okay so now this is my arm o curve all right so now let's go to the neckline okay the width i'll be using is three inches okay because i want it to be close to my neck if you want yours wider you can increase it okay and then the depth that i'll be using as well is one inch okay remember i said we are drafting for the back okay so after that i'll be connecting the neckline to the shoulder slant okay just like this so the next thing i'm going to do is this because it's going to be a sleeveless jacket all right i'm going to reduce the neck slant by about 7.5 inch okay so i want the shoulder to go inward a little all right so on this shoulder slant i'll be marking 0.75 inch inward okay and then i'll be connecting it to that midpoint that i marked earlier okay can you see what i'm doing and that will be my new armhole so now to the end of the dress okay i'll be marking one inch upward okay just like this and then i'll be connecting it to the bottom of the dress okay we want the bottom of the dress the bottom of the jacket to have a curved feel all right so i'll be connecting it this way and then that will be all the next thing i'm going to do is to cut the fabric okay so when you're cutting remember to add 0 0.5 inch um seam allowance to the neckline okay to the shoulder slant and also to the arm o okay remember we've already added a one inch seam allowance to the side of the dress okay now to construct the front of the jacket okay first you fold your fabric into two just like what i have done okay yeah, I folded my fabric into two and then I placed the back pattern on it and then I outlined it okay remember I said we we're going to use the exact same thing for the front and the back just that we'll be making some alterations to the front so if you look at the right hand side of my dress you see that I have a lot of space okay on the fabric I have about 15 inches so you have to leave that space as well okay because that is the space that we are going to use to construct the waterfall effect all right so when you fold your fabric you leave enough space before you draw out your pattern all right so now what I'm doing here is to change the neckline for the front so now i'm increasing the neck depth of the front okay so i'm changing it to three inches so what i did there was just to measure two inches down you know we used one for the back right measure two inches down and then i connected the neck width of three inches to the neck depth so now what i'm going to do is to draw a line a slant line actually from the new neck depth to the edge of the fabric okay that space that we left 
okay so after doing that i'm going to connect that edge from the edge right there straight down to the m of the fabric okay can you see what i'm doing so here first of all i'm using a straight line i'm going to draw out a straight line okay but i'll be covering it later okay so first of all you can use a ruler but if you're really good with freehand you can just draw a curved shape all right so now what i'll be doing is to curve the line okay i'll be using the straight line as a guide okay we don't want the waterfall effect to be to look weird all right so i'm just trying to curve the line a little okay you can curve it as much as you want all right but this is perfect so now again how the bottom of the jacket to also have a curved feel okay so i also to curve inward so here what i'm trying to do is to curve the line into the bottom that is the m of the jacket all right so what i'm going to do next is to alter the armhole for the front okay remember that the armhole for the front is usually deeper than that of the back okay so i'm going to find the midpoint okay just right there and then i'm going to connect it by about half an inch okay so from the chest line to the shoulder line okay so i'm taking in about 0.5 inch inward and then i'm connecting it from the chest line to the shoulder line and then that will be all for the front pattern all right just as a recap the only difference between the front and the back was the armhole yeah the neck depth and then the curve that we made all right also remember to curve the bottom of the clothes just like we did for the front okay after that you can now cut your fabric after cutting your fabric remember to notch all the points that are needed okay your waist your hips um and then you also notch some places on the extension that we made okay so that it will be easy for you to join them together when you're sewing all right also you're going to cut your lining the exact same way okay don't reduce or add to the length or the width okay cut it the exact same way okay and also put your notches all around the same notches that you put on the main fabric is the same notch that you should put on the lining all right so after cutting the fabric and the lining okay the next thing we're going to do is to join them together okay so first we're going to join the lining separately and then the main fabric separately okay so now we're going to join them at the shoulder and at the side right side facing right side okay just the normal way we join our fabrics okay so join them separately and then i'll show you what next to do so after joining them at the shoulder and at the side okay this is what i have okay so first this is the fabric okay you see the jacket is already formed so if you're not making a reversible one or if you don't want to line your jacket you can just finish the edges of your jacket and that will be whole okay but if you want to make it a reversible one you still have some work to do all right so here is the lining as well okay so now let's join both pieces together before we proceed with joining if you want to have a neat finishing okay the first thing you should do is to press open all your seams both on the lining and on the main fabric okay so as you can see here i've already pressed all my seams open at the sides and at the shoulder okay so after doing this we can now join the pieces together so here is what we're going to do place the main fabric on the table okay and then you now bring the lining okay and then you place it on top of the main fabric right side facing right side okay so you place the right side of the main fabric on the table right side facing up and then you bring the right side of the lining as well and place it on the right side of the fabric the main fabric here yeah? and then you match it okay ensure that the shoulder seams match the shoulder seams on both sides and all the notches that you made while cutting remember those notches yes so ensure that all those notches match okay and then you pin everything down guys please leave your sleeve open don't touch the sleeve at all all right 
so after pinning down this is what i have so i'm just going to sew all round with a 0.5 inch seam allowance and then i'll leave about 5 to 10 inches open at the end on sewn okay so after sewing this is what i have okay i've sewn all round this is still the wrong side okay i've sewn all round the edges of the coat and this is the space that i left on sewn so it is from the space that will be turning the fabric inside out all right but before we turn it inside out we're going to notch all around the edges of the clothes okay everything from the neck to the m okay so that when we turn the clothes inside out and we high on it it is going to lay flat please guys don't miss any of the steps it is very very important <music> so for the slips i may not be able to explain in details what i did but i believe that if you follow my demonstration you're going to get it okay so please just watch closely so this is still the wrong side of the fabric okay so i've spread the slips on opposite sides okay and then after that i folded it onto the right side okay just like I did here so I'm folding the sleeves to the right side and then I'm matching it up at the seams okay so once again I spread the main fabric and the lining at opposite side and then I folded the sleeves to the right side okay can you see it so now I'm matching it up right side facing right side and then I'll be pinning it down. I hope you can see that my hand is actually between both sleeves all right it is underneath holding both pieces together okay so now I'm turning it and then I'm pinning it down okay please guys just look closely this is a little technical because it is sleeveless if it had sleeves it would have been much easier than this okay so just bear with my explanation <laughs> So for the second sleeve, I'll be doing the exact same thing, okay? Pull the sleeves to opposite sides, okay? You remember, we are still on the wrong side of the fabric, okay? And then you fold the sleeves to the right, okay? And then you match it up, all right? So match it up and then pin it down, okay? Pin it all around. You see what I'm doing? Okay, so match it up and then you pin it all around. So after pinning the boat sleeves all around actually, you're going to sew it with a 0 0.5 inch seam allowance. Okay, which was the allowance that I added while cutting the fabric. I hope you remember. Okay, so just take your time with the sleeves. Okay, and then I'm sure you're going to have a very, very neat finishing. Okay, because the essence of doing the closed finishing is such that the seam is not visible both on the outside and on the inside okay we want to be able to wear our jacket inside out all right so after sewing your seams ensure you notch round the seams okay you notch it round so after notching turn your fabric inside out all right through the opening at the M. okay remember that opening so turn your fabric inside out from that opening you see the sleeves you see we don't have any stitch showing on the outside okay so that's the essence of all the work we put in all right you see how neat it is okay so remember to notch remember to notch before you turn it inside out and then you give it a good good press so now to the only opening that we have on this jacket okay the opening had a hem okay so what I'm going to do is to fold in the seam allowance okay I'm going to tuck it in okay and then I'll pin it down after doing that I'm going to sew with about one eighth of an inch I'm going to sew very very close to the edge okay so guys ensure that you use a matching thread while sewing and after doing that you high on your jacket very well okay ensure to take your time while doing that okay so guys here is our beautiful jacket okay you see how beautiful it is 
and this is the inside as well okay you see how neat it is okay so you can style your jacket anyhow you want okay so guys if you have not subscribed to my channel please 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 subscribe okay please share and like my content and then put your comments um, in the comment section i'm going to answer to your questions if there are any thank you for watching once again take care of yourself see you next time bye